YouTube, my name is Mesa Sean, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Alright folks, well, the Vault of Glass raid from Destiny 1 is coming back on May 22nd. So what does that mean? Well, that means you need a refresher on how the raid works. And also, I needed one going through this video. And if you've never played the raid from Destiny 1, well, you're going to love this video. Joe Blackburn did say in one of the previous blogs that, well, they may not be doing just a straight port from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2 because they need to accommodate, well, new supers, new enemy types, new exotics, but more than likely a lot of the mechanics probably will remain the same. So we're going to cover all the mechanics from the Destiny 1 raid, but I will try to mention some of the new supers we have, uh, weapons maybe even, and some exotics that you might want to use when the Vault of Glass hits. If you enjoy this video, slap that like button and also leave me a comment for the lovely YouTube algorithm. And on the day of recording this video, there's one more day of 30% off a of G Fuel. Click the link in the description and use promo code MESAARMY. All other times it will be 10% off. Alright, let's get into it. First things first, we need to get into to the vault door and keep in mind again this is a refresher guide and I'm sure there will be changes and I will make guides on all of the changes per encounter when the raid actually drops or maybe just one big full guide. Don't mind some of the old footage you will see it's not the greatest quality and also I pulled it from old streams so you might see some overlays that say Destiny 2 gameplay coming soon. Anyway we need to get this vault door open so how do we do that? We need to form the spire. The spire is going to be something in the middle of this open space over on Venus and Bungie did say in a recent there's a get Bungie, the rest of Venus will be not available, so don't even try to go there. So, when we're in the front of the vault door, there's going to be a middle plate, a left plate, and a right plate. As you have guardians stand on those plates, well, once you stand on them long enough, the spire will form and the vault door will open. So you're going to have two guardians on the left plate, two guardians on the right plate, two guardians on the middle plate. And one of the cool things is the way the Vex will flow out of certain areas, the two middle guardians can kind of help out on both right and left. The main issue with this encounter is besides ads, you have these things called Praetorians. And they're glorified minotaurs, or I should say some pretty beefy minotaurs, okay? Uh, please, Bungie, do not put wyverns in this section or in the raid at all, okay? Please. Um, so for this encounter, I would use some heavies that can take down yellow bars or adds very, very quickly. And um, I will tell you, as you saw in that intro clip, I'm envisioning Sleeper Simulant will be amazing for this raid. So if you have the catalyst for it, get that thing masterworked, okay? You're going to need it for the Templar and more than likely Atheon. I will put a link in the description to a whole bunch of really nice diagrams of all the encounters and rooms in the Vault of Glass. So here we have, you can see the vault door in the back, middle plate, left plate, right plate, where the guardian should stand. And you can see, more importantly, the flow of the Vex. The bottom of the Vex are just going for the left and right plates. And you can see the Vex over on the left and right on the top. Well, they can go either down to the left and right plate or they can go for the middle plate. Once the spire has formed, meaning that you've stood on those plates long enough, then the vault door will open and you can all go inside. So there's going to be a number of caves and different sorts of ledges and trees that you can jump on. And in this area during Age of Triumph, there were two chests that you can get. Uh, will those be available in Destiny 2? I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, right away when we first came down initially in Destiny 1, you could grab this chest here. And then there was one other chest if you kept on going. Then after we grab those two chests, well, then we're going to make our way into the Templar's Well. Now, a number of encounters is going to happen in the Templar as well and eventually we're going to have to kill the Templar and that's where I think the Sleeper Stimulant is going to come in handy. Also, I would say for this raid, ideally, in my humble opinion, two Titans, two Hunters, and two Warlocks would be ideal. Now, the first thing you're going to notice for this first encounter is there's going to be this little well in the middle of the map. Okay, I'm going to pause it right there. That thing's straight ahead. That's going to be used only in a bad situation, meaning you get marked for negation and need to be cleansed. A little bit more about that in a little while. But here's a little nice map you might want to download from that same exact web page. First off, see that you have confluxes, left, right, and also middle. 
Now, we need to protect those confluxes because where the enemies are spawning from, they want to go sacrifice themselves at those confluxes. Now, initially, you're going to protect one, then protect two, and then protect all three of those confluxes. So, three phases for now. Ads will be spawning, and also the Templar will be trying to shoot you. You will have fanatics, and when you kill them, they drop this green goo on the ground. Do not walk through the green goo. If you walk through it, you will have to go to that well right below the Templar and cleanse yourself. Not a good thing because more than likely you can get killed trying to go down there. When you see Ritual of Negation on your screen, a ton of these ads are going to start spawning like crazy. So for here, I would definitely, well, you want to chain supers. I would definitely use tethers for this part. I would probably pop a few bubbles and titans out there. Uh, I would run your Ward of Dawn bubble. Try to run Helm of Saint 14 because this way when you or your allies run through your Ward of Dawn, you get an overshield. I'm going to say shotguns. Well, maybe I'd say probably heavy machine guns would be good for this encounter and weapons where you're not getting up close. You know what? For, scratch the shotguns, okay? Uh, you do not want to get close to ads because once you kill those, especially the fanatics, and they drop that green goo in the ground, you don't want to get close, right? So here we're defending the left and right confluxes, and that middle one has gone away. Same thing is going to happen. We're going to sit there just protecting everything. I'm just getting some ammo here. But again, if I was marked, I would have to go to that well that's right below the Templar. And that is risky because the Templar is shooting at me. I could get marked again. There's tons of ads down there. So just be careful. So again, you want to chain a lot of supers when the Templar puts out on your screen uh, Ritual of Negation. For this encounter, we're mixing it up maybe just slightly where we're having three Guardians left and three Guardians right, but two Guardians in particular are focusing on the middle for a number of reasons. One, ads and fanatics will be coming out of there. And also when the Templar summons his legions, well, then you're going to have a boatload of those fanatics and a ton of ads to deal with on the left and also the middle. So you all want to be safe and use longer range weapons. I would say probably machine guns, maybe linear fusion rifles because they are getting a buff. Definitely not shotguns or anything up close because if you get marked, you need to go into that well and cleanse. So to summarize this phase or phases, well, we've got the three oracles. We we need to protect. First phase is going to be to protect the bottommost oracle on your screen right there, then just the left and right ones, then all three at the same time. Killing all the ads, make sure that you do not step in the green goo on the ground or you need to go to that central cleanse well and cleanse yourself while you've got the Templar above shooting down at you. So just be careful. Once you protect all three of those, well then we're going to move on to the oracles. You need to destroy oracles now and it's going to occur in seven waves of of these oracles spawning. Every time an oracle will spawn, you will hear a chime. So you want to have your sound up and maybe your music down, but you need to destroy them. If one of the oracles does not get destroyed, the entire team gets marked and you have to go down to that central well and all of you will be cleansed because you'll be marked for negation if you miss an oracle. So you will have seven rounds of these oracles. While you're trying to destroy these oracles, it gets a little hairy because you're going to have ads and minotaurs trying to kill you that are coming from down low and different areas. However, what's really annoying is that you will have these hobgoblin snipers perched up on different areas. So you want to have at least three people, in my opinion, on sniper duty to constantly be taking out the snipers and people calling out where the snipers are and when they spawn in. Also, for this encounter, I would run more defensive supers. Um, I forgot to mention, in the previous encounter, I, I probably would go with offensive supers like uh, Tether, uh, maybe a couple of Bubbles, uh, maybe some Dawn Blades, maybe even Stasis because you want to kill as many things as possible, especially all of those Fanatics. But for this encounter, I would go Warlock Will of Radiances, I would go Titan Ward of Dawns with a Helm of Saint-14, and maybe four Hunters, I don't know, I would probably go Tethers for this one to keep some ads at bay. But the critical thing is you want to have some people, uh, well, you want to kind of split off with at least three Snipers, taking out the hobgoblins from afar and then also people on the ground taking care of all the other ads. Now here we missed an oracle which means we got to go all to the middle and we need to cleanse. Now we can go back. However, if you do get marked and you have to cleanse, well, then you got to restart that phase of oracles. You don't go back to the beginning. 
So let's say you're at uh, phase five, okay? Um, then you gotta just redo phase five and then continue to six and continue to seven. So just do your best to get all of those oracles. I found this image on Google, so I will link it in the description as well as credit whoever made it. But in a nutshell, you wanna have three guardians left, three guardians right, so that you guys can get to those back left hidden, right hidden, you could see far right, low right, left stairs, and also still have access to that middle mid. Once you make it through all seven of these waves, well, you finally are ready to fight the Templar. Now when we fight the Templar, you wanna switch to your DPS loadouts. I would go with Sleeper Simulant more than likely, Rockets perhaps, Snipers, Titans, Ward of Dawns, Will of Radiance, and Hunter Tethers. The fight begins when someone picks up the Relic. Now the Relic has a light attack, it has a heavy attack, it has also a cleansing effect that you can do. I forget all the controller buttons at this point. But then also you're building up super energy. When you build up your super energy, you could fire it at the Templar shield because he is immune right now. And once his shield comes down, then you could start doing DPS. Also, you might want to have someone with the exotic trace rifle Divinity as a debuff on the Templar when you're doing DPS. So quick notes, okay? As soon as the Templar fight begins, he's going to be in the middle of the map. From there, once his shield comes down, like I just popped it right there, he can teleport to two different areas. Now, you can block that teleport and just keep DPS DPSing and DPSing and DPSing, but you're gonna have a lot of ads to deal with and usually the relic holder can kind of just bounce around and uh, also then use their relic to actually defend themselves, but then also block the teleport. While this is going on, these red oracles will spawn, and if not destroyed, the team will get marked for negation. However, the relic holder will be able to cleanse you. So usually in this fight, everyone, when you're going to do DPS or just in general, uh, we usually like to stay in one area. So the relic holder wants to usually kill a bunch of adds with their light or heavy attack or even ground attack to then build up some of their super. So we usually found when we used to do this, we would stay in the back of the map right behind all of these rocks right here because it usually was pretty safe and you want to definitely have a well of radiance uh, because there's going to be a lot of splash damage. We also would put up Titan bubbles to the areas where the Templar might be teleporting to. If uh, you could block the teleport over and over, well, you could constantly do DPS and eventually just one phase the boss. However, we'll have to see how it works in Destiny 2. There are the two areas, the only two areas where the Templar could teleport, and you could see the Relic Holder is going to be blocking those teleports back and forth, back and forth, but also using that other bubble for a little bit of protection when they go to block that teleport while everyone else is doing DPS. So here we are in the back of the map and we're trying to shoot some of those red oracles so we don't get marked and also the relic holder is also trying to go for those oracles and then once the shield comes down you want to try to keep aggro on you. We're going to need some uh, weapons of light, we're going to need some well of radiances for protection of that splash damage, tethers should go out, divinity should go out, I'm going to say slipper simulant probably will be meta here or maybe a rocket launch I don't know, we'll have to see. Definitely not machine guns. And basically, you could just one phase. But sometimes the Templar gets a little annoyed and starts looking at the Relic Holder. And just stay right here and just everyone just empty everything you have into the Templar and it will eventually go down and die. Once you kill the Templar, two doors will open, this main one here and then also a little side passage and there's a number of chests. There was a little one that really didn't give you anything and then down below there's going to be another chest that you can hop down on and I'll make an updated guide if these chests change or they're like meaning their locations and then also one in the Gorgon's Labyrinth. But all right, I always remember this first chest here that you would drop down on. A lot of us got exotics out of them and I believe this is where a lot of people got their first Gallarhorns. I got my first. Thunderlord, Hawk Moon, things like that. Now we're entering the Gorgon's Labyrinth, and we need to make it to the end of this maze here. And now the Gorgons will be kind of roaming around, and you can't be spotted by them. If you do get spotted, they make a big loud shriek, and you have about, I don't know, seven to ten seconds, and you might be able to kill it if all of you focus on it at one time, but 
you don't want to do that. The goal is really just to get through the maze uh, quickly and not have to deal with any of them and not let one of them spot you. I found this really nice map on Google, which I will link in the description. Uh, who knows if things will change, like I said. And um, I will credit them also in the description, whoever made it. But um, in a nutshell, we would like go to one spot, wait for the Gorgon to leave, and then just sprint the entire time until we made it to the final tunnel that then leads to a section where uh, it's not a puzzle, but it's basically a bunch of disappearing and reappearing pillars that you jump from and jump from and jump from until finally you jump all the way down because then finally you are in the vault of glass. And we've got two more major phases to really deal with, which is one, the gatekeeper section, and then also Atheon. So now we're in the final room where we will face off with Atheon, but we have the gatekeeper encounter first. Now, when you walk into the room, you've got a huge Vex Hydra. You need to kill that thing. Now, you're going to have some portals on the left and the right, and also some plates right in front of them. You could see one on the ground right to the left of me right there. When people stand on them, they start to activate and open up those portals. So the goal of this encounter is to kill the gatekeeper that's in the middle, activate those portals. People will go into the portals to grab relics, and then everyone will converge on the middle, and they will protect a conflux. And that conflux you need to protect because of the fact that Vex will be trying to sacrifice themselves, and they will keep spawning in over and over. So after a certain amount of time, the Vex will just stop spawning, and you've completed that encounter. So memorize this now, okay? Left Mars, right Venus. Say it again. Left Mars, right Venus. You're especially going to need to know that for Atheon because randomly people will get teleported into either Mars or Venus. Now, the bottom of this image is where you walked in from. On the left and right, we see our little plates that you need to stand on to open up the portals when need be. And also the middle is where Atheon will come out at the end. We'll get to that in a little bit. There's a little platform in the center. That's where you're going to do DPS on Atheon. And the portals you can see are just right above on the ledges for both Venus and Mars. Left Mars, right Venus. Now initially when the raid comes out, more than likely it's going to be really hard. Um, in the footage you're seeing in the background, we would have two people go into Venus, two people go into Mars, and then one person stand on the plate, and then one person stand outside just killing ads over and over. I'm envisioning when the actual raid comes out that we're going to have to do one at a time. So the first person picks up the relic. To keep it simple, you need to go get a second relic. The way you do that is, well, we're going into Mars on the left-hand side. So people are outside keeping the portal open, letting us get inside. We need to kill this gatekeeper really quickly. Once we kill the gatekeeper, a second relic will spawn. Now, while you're in here, you're constantly being marked by the void, which will make you blind eventually. However, if you have the relic, you can cleanse yourself as well as any other players who are marked by the void. The people outside, they need to keep that portal open so that we can come back outside. Now, in the center of the arena now, a uh, conflux is there and one guardian is out there in the middle protecting that conflux from Vex sacrificing themselves on that conflux. Now, I don't have footage of the Venus section for this part, but I think you'll see it during Atheon. But Normally at this point, you know, if it was really hard or when the Vault of Glass first came out, the entire team would then go to the Venus side, open up the portal, send the people with the relics in and do the same thing. However, we had this down at this point, so they just went in. And also the Venus area is a smaller arena, so someone can go right in there kill the gatekeeper, get that relic, and come right back out. Now that we're all outside, we've got our relics. Well, it's real simple. Just stand here and protect that uh, conflux right in the middle from the Vex sacrificing, and they'll be spawning out of the back, they'll be spawning out of the two portals, and that's it, you're done. So to summarize, you enter the arena, you kill the first gatekeeper, you kill some adds, you grab the relic from the center of the arena, that person then will go into either Mars or Venus, I usually used to always go into Mars first, then you need to grab a second relic from another gatekeeper, if you get marked by the void when you're inside, you can just cleanse yourself with that relic, and then uh, just do it on the Venus side, and then everyone goes to the center they protect the conflux from vex sacrificing themselves and you're done with the encounter and then you're ready to face atheon for atheon you're going to want to stack all of your debuffs and also use your highest dps weapons so once again i'm going to say sleeper simulant i'm going to say divinity 
Ready to add a debuff to Atheon. You want to use Tethers, you want to use Well of Radiance, you want to use Titan Bubbles, and so forth. As soon as Atheon comes out, three people go left to open up the Mars portal, three people go right to open up the Venus portal. At this point, Atheon will teleport three people to either Mars or Venus, hence why we're keeping both portals open right now. In a nutshell, everyone has to be comfortable with either staying outside and keeping the portals open, uh, dealing with supplicants because they can be a pain, or going inside and doing what you need to do on either Venus or Mars. So once Atheon teleports three people, you've got your away team and you've got your home team. As soon as the three people get teleported, they're going to yell out either Mars left or Venus right. When you get teleported, three people go in. One person grabs a relic and the other two are there to destroy oracles. Now the person with the relic, their job is to ground slam or just use your heavy or light attack to kill some of the ads in there because they can be challenging. But then also cleanse because you and your other teammates will be marked by the void the whole time. So the teammates inside, they're focusing on the oracles. You could use some fusion rifles if I recall correctly, we're pretty good on them. Uh, some of the vault of glass weapons had bonus damage to oracles. The other team outside Side, they're keeping the portal open, dealing with supplicants as well as adds. And then the person with the relic and the other teammates, they might do one more cleanse before they go out. But they're all going to go to the center platform. And the person with the relic is going to then use the cleanse button or whatever it is on controller. And you're going to notice on the screen, you're going to see times vengeance. And there's going to be a timer in it. That's your timer that you can all do DPS on Atheon. And while you're doing this also, you will be able to get your super over and over and over. So once you get to about five seconds, you want to get out of there because then the splash damage will kill you really quickly and pretty much just rinse and repeat. The relic holder is going to be holding the relic the whole time. And then from here, you're just going to do the same thing over and over. So here I'm not on the away team, on the home team. So we were called out that it's Mars. So we're on the left hand side and we're holding the portal open. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of supplicants all over the place. Here's a view of us going into Mars. I did not grab the relic, and I am on Oracle duty. So I've got my fusion rifle out, but who knows in Destiny 2 what will be the most effective weapon to take out these oracles. So our job is to simply just walk down and make our way to the portal after destroying all of the oracles, go to the center, and do damage to Atheon and hopefully kill him. So let's summarize, and I will let some footage roll out here. So you come into the arena, three people left, three people right to start opening up those portals a left mars right venus then you will have three people get teleported to either mars or venus and three people outside the players outside need to deal with supplicants and keep the portal open for whatever call out it is mars left or right venus if you get teleported and you grab the relic your job is to take care of the ads on that particular destination mars or venus but then also cleanse your two teammates while they're destroying oracles if you're one of the other two teammates well, you're just destroying oracles. Once you make your way back to the middle, if you've got the relic, you simply hold open the relic and keep an eye on that timer and warn everyone when it gets to about five seconds to jump out. But here, I think in this clip, we just one face him right here. Uh, again, use debuff weapons, use uh, Well of Radiance, use Ward of Dawn, perhaps Celestial Nighthawk. A sleeper simulant, maybe a rocket launcher, maybe a sniper. Um, what else? I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. I mean, we'll all figure it out. Oh, Divinity too. Divinity. I would say a debuff like Divinity would also help out immensely. So hopefully this guide helped, well, refresh you if you've played the Vault of Glass and just needed a refresher. And if you've never played the Vault of Glass, well, you've got something to look forward to because this is the holy grail of all raids. All right, guys, leave me a hashtag made it to the end. If you did make it to the end and do me a favor, drop a like in this video only if you see fit follow me on twitter at mesa sean check out my stream usually know it's on youtube and that's it i am out of here like vladimir um just real quick i am the outside team here but i believe during age of triumph there was a challenge we had to do where every single person had to go in and destroy an oracle at some point so i think that's why i come in here and i destroy a couple of oracles i think it was just one but i don't know why i go after two here or I think, yeah, I don't know why I destroyed two there. I don't know. I forget. It's been so long, guys. Anyway, also check out G2A.com. There will be a link in the description. Just type in the game that you're looking for. Check the seller's feedback, and you can get some games at some really, really good prices. All right, I'll see you guys later.